Good evening, ladies. This is Monique Nubia Sunshine coming to you with Chapter 2 of Sacred Woman by Queen Afua. In this particular chapter, it is application time. It is time for us to start putting to use what it is that we want to do to begin our journey in becoming a sacred woman. And I am going to share many different suggestions and ideas on how you may want to begin your journey and how you may want to um, set up your yourself in doing this. So I'm going to read from the chapter and then um, I'm going to do some more discussion. So um, sacred womb altar work. Face your heart to the east, to the rising sun. And in the book, it shows you a layout, and I'm going to add the layout to the Facebook page. But it tells you how to be able to build a sacred altar. And as I mentioned in the previous chapters, how it is important for us to be able to make that time in the morning for ourselves in order to honor. So this would be uh, sort of that time that you take for yourself to build your altar. You can take a weekend and say, you know what, I'm going to start it on the weekend or I'm going to start it early in the morning or you just set some time to yourself to make you an importance in creating your altar. And chapter two kind of tells you what supplies and things that you're going to need in order to build your altar, things that you may want to implement yourself. You don't have to go exactly with the book, but I do feel it is important for us to build an altar because at least you'll have a place to go to to do your sacred work and that will translate through the rest of your your day when you're at work uh, and you'll be able to carry it with you everywhere so it says the sacred tablecloth white or blue scarf or prayer shawl wear during your altar work so wear something it is suggested that you wear something that is sacred to you whether it be in in these particular colors or a color that you feel like uh, is is strengthening to you. So uh, sacred color cloth to lay before your altar with your sacred instruments to be played as you pray. Whether it be a harp, a drum, a bell, or a rattle, or some type of music. I know some women have waterfalls, these little, um, it's like a little fountain thing that creates the sound of a waterfall. I love meditation music. That works for me. Or sometimes a uh, a Buddhist bell or chiming bell um, and things like that for my altar. But you make it specific to your own. Remember to purify all of your sacred altar objects before positioning them on your altar. Handle each object with consciousness, emanating the highest possible vibrations and intent from your body, mind, and spirit. Wash each altar object in a bowl of purified water mixed with a few drops of frankincense and myrrh and a pinch of sea salt. Dry clean with a white cloth. And if you don't have those things, purified water could be spring water uh, for you or something that um, I, I sometimes do crystal infusions and I put my clear quartz in a, a cup of water and let it purify that way and that would be my purified water so it really depends on what it is that you have available to you or what you can get I know some women who use Florida water which is also very good uh, whatever you feel is good for the cleansing and, and to be able to cleanse your objects that you're going to put on your altar is good for you. It's of your choice. And these are suggestions as well. A sacred tablecloth would be to cover the table with a clean white cloth for pure to purify. Then add the appropriate or suggested color for the gateway that you're, wa you're working in. For example... If you use a blue cloth to create peace within the womb and lessen menstrual bleeding. So there's a, a clearly some type of color that is associated with each uh, part of thing that you want to, to purify. And in here it suggests or says that a blue cloth will create peace in the womb and lessen menstrual bleeding. For me... 
I use, I work with the chakras all the time. So I use the color of the chakras. And what chakra that is associated with our sexuality, our creativity, our emotional center is our sacral chakra, which is related to the color orange. So I have a lot of orange or mostly orange hues in my altar area. I also have an altar where it's like a family tree and I will post a video of me talking about my altar. And uh, what I do is I utilize the color of my sacral chakra because that is where my womb, my reproductive, my creative center, my emotional center, uh, where where I want to be able to empower the most and do the healing. And that's where we're going to be doing our healing in our womb area. But if you're using the uh, sacral, if you're using the chakra system, then I would suggest you use the colors of the chakras. It's very powerful. Pictures. Place an inspirational picture of yourself in a beautiful frame made of a natural material of wood, crystal or glass upon your altar as a reminder of your divinity. Next, add frames of pictures of symbolic re representations of spiritual guardians, ancestors, elders, uh, anyone that is close to you that you want to honor and put on your altar. Sacred stones. Place the recommended sacred stones on your altar to harness energies of the mineral kingdom to support your healing and your intention. For example, rose quartz is a wonderful tool for invoking divine love. So if you're interested in learning more about crystals and stones, I also have videos based on that as well. And I do provide them for some of my clients. If you would be interested in purchasing them, or if you're interested in knowing what, what places, where places you can go to to pick up your crystals and stones, I wear some of them on me. I do have them on my altar, as I mentioned before. And I also have crystal and stone grids that, to um, create powerful energy. So you do have to, although it's suggested to use certain tools and things here from chapter two, I also urge you to make it your own. And anything that you do, and when you're doing sacred work, sacred comes from here, comes from within. And what someone else's sacred is doesn't necessarily mean that is your sacred. So I all I urge you throughout this whole process to do something that is meaningfully sacred to you and put that in your altar work. Put that in your, your sacred woman healing work so that you can bring about everything that you want to manifest in your life and do the healing at the same time. Okay. So um, it's also suggested to use fresh flowers or plants which I do, and I call my altar my family tree because I have my ancestors at the bottom of my family tree. And as I go up, you know, it's my future, my present, and then my future. And I explain that in my altar video. So I'm going to attach that so you ladies can see that. Also, uh, candles uh, is suggested. I have a plethora of candles. I love candles. I love to be able to do my meditations in front of my altar and my prayers in front of my altar with my candles lit, my incense burning, the energy, uh, everything to be able to produce the type of comfortability that allow me to be in meditation or allow me to be in honor of self. And it to, I can tune out the world with this type of energy. So I, I suggest that you you try candles as well if, if you're um, building your altar. Um, it is suggested to also get a baptism bowl and fill it with um, fill a crystal bowl or wooden bowl with purified water to absorb negativity in the environment. Pour the water out after each altar ceremony. And the reason why you do that is because the water is purified, and when you do your altar ceremony, you're giving away things. You're sacri you're giving a sacrifice in your altar. You're giving away your problems and your issues, and and what that does is that that is absorbed by the water that is there in the altar. So it's always best to get rid of it and you want to refill it with fresh purified water each time. And I do have, not necessarily, I don't call it my baptism bowl. It's actually a, a long tubular cup um, or glass that I have that um, is my purified water. And I just call it simply that. Um, and then you have a feather she's suggesting to place on your altar to maintain your balance Throughout your journey, no matter how fierce the winds may blow, your feather is to represent how sturdy and firm that you're going to be. 
an ankh or sacred symbol. Now I have um I have a sort of like a hairpiece and it looks like a pendulum also that has an ankh on the end of it and I use that on my altar. I'm not really big on uh idols, uh symbols of such like the cross or things like that, but the life symbol is very powerful to me and it, and and I can relate to it a little bit better. Um I don't put little buddhas on my altar or symbols of of um actual gods on my altar but it is your choice to do that i know plenty of people who do that and it's quite okay to cater it to yourself i don't do it personally just because i just prefer not to uh i actually use the crystals and stones and they speak to me and they're my i feel like my ancestors talk through those things through those uh crystals and stones um, you can put food. I don't put food on my altar. Uh, the water is enough, but it's suggested that you could put food and rinse. It says to rinse and dry all sacred food to be offered to the mother, father, creator, and your ancestors. Your offerings should consist of high quality dried grains, fruits, uh, fresh fruits, a place in a wooden bowl, glass, or clay bowl. So that is definitely suggested. Um, anointing oils is also suggested. You want to put a small amount of essential oil um, on you to bless your forehead. You know, and it, it, it all, like I said, is very personal. However, you want to be able to embrace uh, or do your rituals at your altar is totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way. It, it's wrong when you don't take something from here and put it over there on your altar. So take what is in your heart and put it there, whatever you feel is necessary for your for your sacred work. Uh, it's also suggested to refresh your sacred altar on the first day that you enter into each gateway. And I will talk about the gateways more. I also wanna read something really quick that's in the book that says, and I call myself a womb man, a womb, a womb man. And it's um, a poem. How can I become a womb man when I don't know my womb? I never had a conversation with my womb, so how can I consider myself a woman? I have been with you, grown with you, been through rites of passages with you from childhood to adolescence to adulthood, and yet I never had a conversation with you. You have been a victim, a consequence to an action, a symptom of a disease, an effect of my action. I have never spoken to you. I have never consulted with you. I inquired of you, cared for you, or understood you, and I call myself a grown woman. Where have I grown? How could I have grown without talking to you, without acknowledging your presence and your works? And I call myself a woman. I have put you through dozens of men, alien spirit beings and entities of all dimensions, all places and, and stations. I have created and destroyed babies through you. I have fed you all kinds of poisons, thereby creating diseases, fibroids, tumors, cysts, and the like. I have sexually abused you, thereby creating sexually transmitted diseases, infections of all types, itching, burning, hurting, pain. I have used you for my own purposes, money, favors, alleged self-esteem, beauty, clothing, food. I have allowed men to probe you, doctors to drug you while I held you down. If I had known someone who had done all these things, I would call them names that I despise, murderer, thief, liar, betrayer, demon. Yes, I would. And I would call myself womb man. 
Time to release. Release. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I am complete. I will be responsible for you. For myself. For my womb. We are in a relationship together. We have been for a very, from the very, very beginning. And I will commune and communicate with you. I will listen to you. I will wash, cleanse, and purify you. I will pay attention to your patterns, your moods, your signs and wonders. I will, I will, I will become the womb man that you made me from the beginning. That's very powerful. I'm, I'm like coming to tears. Right? <laughs> think about it. But it is something that we we need to think about. And it's so powerful that, you know, we are on this journey and we want to retrieve our healthy wounds and keep them sacred. Such, such a beautiful journey to be on. Um, this book, um, this chapter actually... Um, brings you to the gateway. So as we go further, um, the gateway zero, the sacred womb, daily spiritual observances. And in this particular point of the chapter, we talk about the sacred womb um, gateways. And each gateway represents a spiritual exercise of ascension to bring you higher. Um, the sacred, the practices that are offered for gateway zero the sacred womb are to be performed daily for a minimum of 21 days to a maximum of four months. So this will become something that you'll do on a regular basis at the maximum of four months. So this is part of that um, beginning stages of our journey. Disciplining yourself to honor this path will awaken your inner gateways of divinity so that you may blossom and establish your full sacred center. The sacred womb lays a foundation of womb wellnesses that will serve as your preparation for the nine gateways of initiation. Through the 21 day training, you will learn how to cleanse toxic thoughts, foods and attitudes out of your divine body temple. You will present your womb to the gift of wellness philosophy. So ladies, again, I mentioned in the uh, pre the preface video that we need to have a healing philosophy. Um, and it's important for us to be able to have that. And what I will have you ladies do is post to the Facebook event page what your healing philosophies are. If you're not clear on that, please post questions uh, I'd like to know if anybody's not clear on it so that way we can work on it. You can also refer back to our first blog talk radio where I discuss it as well. Okay. With that, um, this includes a natural living approach to food, womb rejuvenation, techniques, womb affirmations, womb meditations for your total attunement. So this is where it begins. It, it becomes real. From what we discussed from the preface to the first chapter to now where it becomes an action and we start to begin to, to heal our bodies. It's very important for us to be able to dive into this chapter and get our altars set up and get um, our rituals set up. So I'm going to come back to you tomorrow evening with more of part um, the chapter two. And we're going to talk about the rituals and things that you can do in order, um, just besides having your altar, but in order to begin and continue this process of becoming a sacred woman. I thank you ladies for joining me. Have a good evening. Namaste.